I told you, folks, if we just get out of the way, God can do some amazing things. And uh, what a blessing it was. I attended the event as well as many of you. And, man, I learned so much and uh, saw some, some sides of people that I didn't recognize were there. When they <laughs> played the music, you know, and they talked about, you know, how quick you're to do the beat, you know, to, to do the compressions. And, uh, you know, some, some, uh, some sides of people came out. Wow. And, uh, but no, we had a great time. And look, next year, uh, this is, uh, we're thankful for what God has given us here. But I keep telling you, our goal is for our community. What can we do for them? And you know, there's going to be, there are so many people around here that would, would be knocking at the doors for the opportunity to come to a free CPR class. And what a way to, get to introduce our church as a spiritual hospital yes. to those around us by offering something like that. And I look forward to partnering and helping uh, Mr. Pat and his, his wife and, and that organization, just encouraging them and seeing what God can do through us in reaching our community, reaching those around us. And, and I'm just thankful, uh, once again, thankful for the organization and how the Lord saved your life, how he happen to put those people in your path on purpose. He never anything. does anything by accident. Right. And uh, and then giving you a heart to do this. And uh, once again, what a blessing that was. And, and it's going to be a blessing. We will proudly display it uh, in a case in the where everybody can will know where it's at there in the lobby and uh, to make sure it's accessible uh, for everyone uh, for the use if, if it were to happen. But uh, hey, you know, he, he made a comment. You know, he wasn't, you know, he knew the Lord was working on his heart, didn't know exactly what he wanted him to do. And maybe still doesn't, but he's trying, he's doing something for the Lord. And, uh, you know, it kind of falls right in line with what I'm preaching this morning. Take the Bible, turn to, turn to John chapter 21 this morning. John chapter 21, let's stand for the reading of God's word. We'll begin in verse 15. And I'm not going to take too long. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you what God gave me. And uh, he's been working on my heart about this passage. And uh, like I said, it falls right in line with what you said. And God doesn't do that by accident either. Everything he does is on purpose. Here in John chapter 21, we we'll begin in verse 15. It says, so when they had dined, Jesus, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He said unto him, yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, feed my lambs. He said unto him again, the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, Feed my sheep. He said unto him the third time, Simon, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus said unto him, Feed my sheep. Verily, verily, I say to you, unto thee, when thou wast young, thou girdest thyself, and would, walkest <coughs> whither thou wouldest. When thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thine hands, and another shall gird thee and carry thee whither thou wouldest not. This spake he, signifying by what death he should glorify God. When he had spoken this, he said unto him, Follow me. Father, we shall love you. I thank you for the opportunity to stand before your people in your pulpit. In your house this morning, I pray that you would um, guard my mouth. Father, may I only say the things that you have me to say. And Father, would you fill me with your words this morning. Thank you again for just the blessing, the privilege to stand in your pulpit. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. The resurrection is past. The disciples have had Jesus appear to them and, and many more. But it's not time to sit back. The disciples are, uh, God is giving them direction. He's showing them uh, these things that he wants them to do. And, and I want you to understand, we just celebrated Easter Sunday. The resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Can I please remind you, it's not time to sit back. It's not time to quit. Even when we fail him over and over and over again. Notice I said over three times. Because he's talking to Peter. The man who denied Christ three times. Over and over and over again, it's not time to stop. It's not time to quit. Thankful for a forgiving Savior. 
one who loves us so much. And even in this case of Peter, who vehemently, with gusto, I'll come up with that because that's not, the other word's not coming out, denied Christ three times. I mean, to the point where he was, he was using language as a Christian he ought not to be using. Cursing. Saying, I don't know that man. Christ comes to him and in love. He says, love is coming. And he asks him three times. And maybe that was a reminder. But, maybe, but I believe today, as God was speaking to my heart as I was praying about this message, I believe God was saying, look, Peter, you messed up. Peter, you messed up three times. Peter, I told you you were going to mess up three times. Peter, I still want to use you. Peter, I still have something for you. Jesus has this private conversation with Peter. You know the one that said, even if I have to die? Peter said, you know, even if I have to die, Lord, I will not deny you. But yet he denied him. Then he denied him three times. In this conversation, Jesus Although I'm sure reminding him of the failure, spoke to him of his love and his usefulness. Can I tell you, God has a plan for each one of us in this room. Yes. The fact that you're sitting in this room, you're breathing the air that he is giving us. He has a use for you. He has a purpose. Not an accidental purpose, not a maybe purpose, a specific purpose. I'm thankful he still had a purpose for Peter here. Too many of us, and can I say, too many of us independent fundamental Baptists, we, we love to hold to that old song, I've read the back of the book and we win. And we love that song and it, it excites us. You know, we've read the book of Revelation, we understand that, that Christ wins and we know that we hold the victory. We have the victory. But... Too many times because of that we sit back and we wait for the end to come. But you know, uh, many times you'll see teams that'll play sports and, and man, they run up the score and the score is, is way up there, whether it be basketball or football, whatever it is. And what do they do? They automatically begin just sitting back. They don't press as hard. They don't play as hard. They don't, they don't run the, pro, the plays like they're supposed to. And what happens? That other team who's pushing really hard starts coming back. Coming back. And I've seen many a game where, you know, where whether I've been coaching or whether I've just been, whether I've been playing or, or whatever. And I've seen that other team come back and even beat them. Now I'm thankful for the fact that we know Satan can't do that. But at the same time, I want you to understand, too many times we get back and we say, hey, we know we have the victory. Christ has won the victory. I'm just going to wait to collect my prize. We sit back. I preached a month ago about we spend more time looking for the future fulfillment to, of Scripture that we forget to fulfill the present call of Scripture. Let me say that again. I want you to hear it because it, it, it rang in my ears all night long. We spend more time looking for the future fulfillment of Scripture that we forget to fulfill the present call of Scripture. Jesus Christ comes to Peter and he says, I have something for you to do. Now, many of us, all of us in this room, we have failures. All of us have Things in our life that we know we failed God in. I'm thankful that God uses people who fail to do his work. Otherwise, he'd have nobody to do anything with. Here, Peter, as I read the scripture, God spoke to me very specifically. Uh, literally, he says, if you love me. Since you say you love me, feed my lambs, feed my sheep, three times, feed my sheep. He has something specific for Peter to do. This morning, can I tell you this morning, God has something specific he desires for you to do. 
And it's not to just fill a space on a pew on Sunday mornings. It's not just to, to... be here on Wednesday night. He's got something specific for you to do. And each one of us need to be constantly before the throne of God saying, God, what would you have me to do yeah. today? See, I'm thankful he doesn't just give me this vague roadmap. And so many times we, we, I talk to younger students, college, you know, students that are looking at college, and they're looking for God's will in their life, and they, they feel like it's this big cloud that's unreachable. Can I tell you, God's got a specific will for you that's very tangible, and it's on a daily basis, and he wants to give it to us. He doesn't want us to just think, oh, we'll never really know God's will. God, look, he came specifically to Peter and said three times, I've got something specific I want you to do. Feed my lambs. The second time he said, feed my sheep. This morning, I want to show you. I want to show you the three things that God spoke to my heart specifically about. Although he knew of Peter's failures, he still had a work for him to do. Although, understand, Christ knows all. There is nothing that you have ever done in your life or ever will do in your life that Christ, God himself, doesn't already know about. Right. Yet he still uses us. I don't get that. You know why we can't get that? Because we don't know the forgiveness that God himself loves us with. Then came Peter to him and said, Matthew chapter 18, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him till seven times? Jesus? <clears throat> Jesus said to him, I say unto thee until seven times, or excuse me, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. He says, look, I, I forgive, Christ knows what forgiveness is. He said, but I keep failing him in this one area, over and over again, I keep failing him in this one area. Look, he says, in this one area, talking once again. To Peter, he says, not just seven times in one area, but seven times, 70 times in one area. Christ knows what forgiveness is. Christ, in forgiveness and love for Peter, says, I still have a work for you to do. For thou, Lord, art good and ready to forgive. We serve a forgiving God this morning Amen. and plenteous in mercy unto all them that call upon thee. Look, if we call upon him, he is willing to forgive us. He desires to forgive us. Mark chapter 2, there were certain of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their hearts. Why did this man just speak blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God only? Here God is speaking to a, a lame man. And he's uh, about to perform an amazing miracle. But he speaks to the man. And he says I, he forgives his sins. And immediately when Jesus perceived in the spirit. Verse 8. That they so reasoned within themselves. He said to them. Why reason ye these things in your hearts? <laughs> Whether is it easier to say to the sick of the palsy. Thy sins be forgiven thee. Or to say arise. And take up thy bed and walk. He's talking to the scribes and Pharisees. He perceives what they're thinking in their hearts and minds. And he says, look, is it, would it be easier for me to say, hey, your sins are forgiven? Or would it be easier for me to say, take up thy bed and walk? Well, the obvious answer is, hey, thy sins be forgiven thee. Because everybody around doesn't know that anything really happened. But Christ is saying, look, he says, which would be easier than verse 9? Whether is it? Easier to say to the sick of the palsy, thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, arise and take up thy bed and walk. But that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. He turns to the sick of the palsy, he said to the sick of the palsy, I say to thee, arise, take up thy bed, and go thy way into thy house. And he did at that very moment. I want you to understand, we may have messed up many times, but Christ himself, God himself, has the ability to, to forgive and use us. Today, we'd be a, a, a people most miserable 
If we did not have that hope and that understanding that Christ is willing to forgive. I mean, Peter flat out denied even knowing him. Yeah, Christ still forgave. Christ still forgives. Luke 23, verse 34, then said Jesus, said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do as he's hanging on the cross. Just after these men had beat him, slapped him, put a crown of thorns upon his head, put nails in his, in his, in his wrists and in his feet, pierced, uh, literally uh, hung him to die on the cross. Still in his heart and his mind was this, Father, forgive them. For they don't know what to do. You know, I wonder how many times Christ, um, in his intercessory prayer for me, says, Lord, forgive me. He has no clue what he's doing. We're honest how many times when he prayed that for us. <laughs> um, Lord, God, Father, um, this guy, he... Look, he doesn't know what he's doing. Just forgive him. P please forgive him. I I'll take care of this. I wonder how many times he has to do that for me. That's what he did for those, those men who abused him. Peter denied him, yet there was forgiveness. I'm thankful that he showed, he proved his forgiveness. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and will heal their land. Folks, can I tell you this morning, Christ has a job for us to do. He was speaking to Peter and he says, look, I have something for you to do. I know you messed up, Peter. Peter, I told you you were going to do that. You denied. You said there's no way that could happen. Peter, I told you that was going to happen. Peter, I knew it was going to happen. Yet I still have a word for you. I still love you so much. I want to forgive you. Feed my, feed my lambs. Feed my sheep. The number one, although he knew of Peter's failures, he still had work for him to do. Just like he knows of our failures and he still has a work for us. Do. Secondly, though his through his questions for Peter, he showed us the reason why we should serve him. Through questioning Peter, he showed us the reason behind what we do. Why do we serve him? Why and how do we serve the Lord? Do we serve him because we have to? Do we serve him because we want to? Is it an obligation or a pleasure? Are we serving out of love or of duty? Am I, am I perhaps doing the things I do out of a sense of guilt? A need to make up for the wrongs I have done? Is it a half-hearted obedience? Or is it with all the gusto I can bring out of, out of a heart full of love and devotion for my God? Through his questions, he was trying to also show Peter why he should feed his lambs. Why he should feed his sheep. Because of his love for his Lord. Deuteronomy 10, 12. And now, Israel, what does the Lord thy God require of thee? But to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all I saw. What does he require? Does he do one of the things he requires of us is to love him. John 2 says, and hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He that said, I know him and keepeth not his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. In him. But whoso keepeth his word in him, verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him by keeping his commandments. But I, I read that and then later on in the book of 1 John he says this. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. Everybody we know that we love the children and God by keeping his commandments. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not grievous. He literally says, 
This is the love of God. The love of God is, 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 should be our motivation for doing the things that God has commanded us to do. He asked Peter three times, lovest thou me more than these? And he's speaking to the, about the disciples that were standing around. He says, do you love me more than you love all these people? And he said, yes, then feed my lambs. Peter, Lord, uh, you know I love you. Uh, Peter, do you love me? Lord, you know I love you. Feed my lamb, feed my sheep. Peter, do you love me? Lord, you know I love you. And he, and he was grieved at that point. And God would ask him three times. He says, then feed my sheep. Out of a heart of love, God says, because you love me, because you're, you, you say you love me, feed my sheep. Through his response to the answers, we see the direction he has for us. Every time in response to Peter's dedication, his, his statement of love, he gives him direction. Because you say you love me, then feed my lambs. Because you say you love me, then feed my sheep. Peter, because you said I love you, then feed my sheep. Through his responses to, his, to the answers that Peter gave, we see the direction. He says, first off, he said, feed my lambs. Find that unique is the young ones. The little ones, my lambs. Then he said, secondly, feed my sheep. Now, it's looking and reading in the, the Greek word here and, and speaking of, of feed. The first time he says, feed my sheep. This literally uh, tends towards uh, tending or shepherding the sheep. That entails a little bit more than just feeding them. You know, I can easily, you know, pour food into a trough. It's a little bit more than that. It's really tending them, taking care of them, shepherding them, bringing them with you through everything. He says, feed my sheep. And he says it again, feed my sheep. Now, please understand, although they aren't the most intelligent animals on the planet, can I tell you, they are one of the most trainable slash loyal animals on the planet. I've just recently seen an illustration done. There's a family that was in a chapel service, and there's a family that raises sheep and goats and all sorts of animals in their home out, way out in the Monroe area. And the dad comes in, and he brings a a little lamb with him, and I mean, just a tiny lamb, and it poops everywhere. That's great. Um, but he brings it in, and he sets the lamb down, and the lamb just wandered off. He walked over, and he's still preaching. He walks over and gets the lamb, carries it back over. Once again, it's pooping everywhere. It's great, little fellas everywhere. Sets it down, wanders off, goes after it again. And he's still preaching this whole time. He picks up the lamb, carries it back over, sets it down. Finally, went up on the platform or something back behind him. And he's still giving the illustration. Finally, his daughter walks in the room. She comes in, she kind of walks down, kind of hidden behind people, walks in, she comes over there, and she goes, Psst. And that lamb was up on the platform, trotted over to her. And she walked up with that lamb, and that lamb walked right by her side the whole time. Came around the corner. She came up and she stood right next to her dad. Guess what that lamb did? Stood right there next to her. Didn't move. And so he goes, and here he is, and he's using it for an object lesson. He, he takes the lamb, carries it over. She's still standing over there. Puts the lamb down. He walks back. And she goes, and the lamb stays. And then he goes, come here, come here. And she just stands there, come here, come here. And calls him by name. Did I? No, I don't know what it's called. Uh, uh, but he starts calling him by name. Lamb wouldn't do a thing, wouldn't budge. Just stood there. She just leans over and goes, Psst. Because she had raised that lamb 
And they had allowed her to raise that lamb on her own. She tended to that sheep. She cared for that sheep. She lived with that sheep, basically. And that sheep knew that she loved him. And that she was going to care for him. Peter is, is saying, look, you know, he's just gotten done. And I, you know, I know in my heart how I would have felt had I just denied my Lord and Savior who died for me. And, and, and I would have felt miserable. In fact, I probably would have had a hard time looking him in the face. I mean, he, he dies and Peter's going, Lord, I'm so sorry. But then to have to look him back in the face. You ever heard somebody hurt, hurt somebody's feelings or whatever it may be? And, and, you know, it's one thing to not ever see them and just call them on the phone and say, I'm so sorry I did that to you. Please forgive me. And they say, okay. Then it is to walk up to them and say, I am so sorry. And you have to look them in the face. Peter, he's looking into his Savior's face, who he just got done denying. How guilty he must have felt. When we look back on our lives, we see where we're at now. We look about looking back and, and you know, God shows us, allows us to see all those times, if you will, that we deny Christ. How we disappointed him by not living for him as we ought to. And yet this morning he comes to us as he came to Peter. He says, do you love me? Yeah, I love you, Lord. Need my lamb. That's something for you to do, Peter. It's not over. It's not over. The fat lady hadn't sung yet, Peter. I got something for you to do. Peter, I'm going to remind you that you denied me. Peter, do you love me? Lord, you know I love you. Feed my sheep. Peter, Peter, do you love me? Lord, you know I love you. And be my sheep. This morning, I'm thankful for a God that forgives. I'm thankful that He doesn't hold it against me. Look, He didn't say, okay, Peter, I want you to go do this and this and this and this. And you need to make sure you do this and this. And then I got something for you to do. Did He do that? No. But Peter, because you love me, be your sheep. This morning, can I tell you, I'm so thankful there is hope. There is forgiveness. Yes. There is love. There is mercy at the feet of Jesus. <clears throat> and can I tell you this morning, he has a specific job for you to do. He has a specific thing he wants each one of us to do. You say, but I don't know what it is. Then I suggest you get in God's word, get on your knees, and just start doing something. Find something to do. <clears throat> Start doing something you know needs to be done. Whether it's at a neighbor's house. Whether it's uh, like Brother Patrick this morning. He just says, look, this is just something that God's laid in my heart. I'm going to do it. Start doing it. Number one, it'll keep you out of trouble. But number two, God will begin showing and directing. Just like he did with Peter. Peter. You love me? Can I tell you this morning, he's got something for you to do. Don't, it's not time to sit back. It's not time for us to go, oh yeah, 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 we, we, we won. You know, Satan's already defeated. God's going to come back. And when he comes back, praise the Lord, we're going to go on. No, it's not time to sit back. It's not time to just say, well, I've, I've done it for years. It's time to say, Lord, what can I do now? What would you have me do right now? Can I tell you, number one, he wants you to recognize that his love for you. You may be here this morning, you've never accepted Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. First off, he wants you to know that he loves you. Yes. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And only wants to know that he wants you to know that he loves you first. Peter, I, Peter, I love you first. Didn't you just see what I just did? 
when you see the fact that I just died for you, when you say I just gave my life for you to prove to you that I love you. But he's wanted to say I love you, and then number two this morning, can I tell you, he wants you to serve him. He desires for you to be obedient and to serve him. Today, do you love him? You know, most of us in this room, if I were to ask that and say, for a raise of hands, everybody raise their hands. Yeah, I love him. Absolutely, I love him, Brother Keith. I love him so much. It doesn't matter what you've done, where you've been, how long it's been, Christ has a calling for your life. He has something specific he desires for you to do. Peter had denied him three times. Peter had stuck his foot in his mouth more times than, than, than most. Yet God had a work for him to do. Out of love and thankfulness for his forgiveness, we need to find out what that is that God has for us. And be thankful that he's called us. And will still use us. He desires to use us. You know, I'm sure Peter, after this conversation, I know he was upset. I know he was he was probably discouraged by the fact that he had to answer that question three times. But after everything was said and done, I want you to notice something. God, God reminded me of this as I was looking at it. He does all this and says. Follow me. He, no, excuse me. He says, be my sheep, be my lambs, be my sheep. Then he comes down. He says in verse 19, and when he had spoken this, he said unto him, follow me. What was the first thing that Christ said to them as disciples? Follow me. He goes back and he reminds them again. Follow me. This morning, maybe that's where you need to start. Maybe we need to go back to the beginning. Maybe he was telling Peter, let's go back from the start. Let's go back to where I first called you. Let's go back to the beginning and let, just follow me. Can I tell you, if you're saying, if you're sitting here today and you say, uh, uh, Lord, what would you have me to do? Number one, just follow him. Start off simple. Follow me. And guess what? As you follow him, he'll begin directing your past. Trust the Lord with all my heart. Lean not to that understanding. In all the ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct my past. This morning, first off, I want you to know he loves you and he's willing to forgive. If you've not accepted Christ as your personal Savior, you have no hope. You, something were to happen to you today and we were to have to use this AED and forgive heaven, heaven help us that we don't. We would have to use this, and, and maybe it wasn't enough. You were to spend, you were to slip off into eternity. And would you spend it in heaven, or would you spend it in hell? He loves you. He's willing to forgive. So you've got to call on His name and ask Him to forgive you. Believe in Him that He died for your sins. Believe in Him that He rose again. That He might have the victory. For you and for me. But can I tell you, uh, secondly today, you may have sat in the pews for a long time. You may be new to sitting in the pews. But can I tell you, God has something absolutely specific for you to do. No matter what you've done in life, no matter how he, you, you might have failed him, not even based on the good things you've done for him, but he's got something for you to do. Can I tell you, we need to make sure we find it and we're doing it. Why? Peter, do you love me? Feed my lambs. Hey, Peter, do you love me? Feed my sheep. This morning, can I ask you this question? Put your name in that blank. Hey, Keith, do you love me? <clears throat> hey, Mike, do you love me? Hey, John, do you love me? Hey, Harold, do you love me?
ていますし This morning he loves you and he's, he's ready to forgive. But number two, it's not over. We're still breathing air. It's not done. God has a work for us to do. What is he calling you to do? With every head bowed, every eye closed this morning. Every head bowed, every eye closed. I am so thankful for his, God's infinite wisdom. The fact that he shows his love. The fact that he shows us this morning he was willing to forgive Peter. The fact that he loves us. I wonder this morning if there would be anyone this morning say, Brother Keith, I have never put my faith in I have not put my faith and trust in Jesus. I have not done this. I have never put my faith and trust in Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. Would you pray for me this morning? We're all across the auditorium. If anyone simply raise their hand and say, Would you pray for me this morning? I'm, I'm not asking you to come forward. I'm not asking you to do anything. But I'm asking that I might pray for you, that God would speak to your heart this morning. Any, all across the auditorium, would anyone simply I have the, the bravery to raise your hands and just pray for me? I've got questions concerning that this morning. All across the auditorium, would anyone simply raise their hand and, and say, pray for me across the auditorium about their salvation? Lord, I've not, uh, Brother Keith, I've never accepted Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. Would you pray for me? If that's the case, then you know what I'm thankful of? Each one of us in here have accepted Christ as a personal Lord and Savior. Based on that statement alone. And can I tell you, no matter what you've done in your life, God has a work for you to do. Just as he spoke to Peter. Peter, do you love me? I guess the biggest question then is, do you love me? I wonder how many this morning with an upraised hand say, Brother Keith, I love the Lord with all my heart. I do, I love him. How many of you simply raise your hand? Say, I love him. But you're admitting to me, keep them up for a minute. I love the Lord with all my heart. I love the Lord with all my heart. But here's the thing, okay? If you love me, you're raising your hand, you're saying you love me. Be my sheep. What are you doing for him? Do you put your hands down? Let's stand to our feet with our heads bowed and our eyes closed, maybe this morning. You'd say, as the music begins to play, you'd say, you know what? I love him. Stand to our feet, heads bowed, eyes closed still. I love him. I love him. And what are you doing for him? Maybe this morning you need to come.